Chapter 2 of Lost in the Waking Well My eyes shot open as I sucked in a lungful of cool, dry air. A web of geometric hallucinations hovered below the ceiling, remnants of the DMT still lingering in my system. The holographic hexagons reminded me of the 3D comics I'd read as a teen, and the red and blue glasses that came taped to the inside cover. I tried to sit up, but my limbs were still partially numb. I managed only to roll to my side. Groaning, I lifted my right leg like a sack of potatoes and dropped it over my left. Daryl, I whispered. He was sleeping in his chair, his head slung uncomfortably onto one shoulder. His dark skin glowed a ghostly blue, illuminated by the screen of the laptop that rested on his thighs. I felt a small amount of pity for hogging the one and only bed, but I figured I was paying him more than enough to endure some temporary discomfort. His laptop began to beep as I peeled the EEG cap from my head and rested the tangle of wires and sensors atop the spare pillow beside me. Daryl snorted and straightened his neck. Alan? He looked around the room, blinking his eyes, trying to remember where he was and what he was doing, a feeling that was not unfamiliar to me. How long was I under? I asked. He let out a sigh as he held his gold wristwatch close to his face. Two hours, roughly? You shouldn't be awake yet. Through the opaque orange curtains covering the window, I could see it was still night. I pulled my cell phone from my pocket and powered it on. Eleven unread messages. From Elizabeth. I could read them in the morning. I need to go back under, I said, swiping the notification from the screen. Daryl shook his head. Absolutely not. We've been over this before, Alan. I was finally making real progress. We can't risk losing this opportunity, I pleaded. What sort of progress? He squinted at his laptop and began tapping on the mouse pad. I met an odd little man. He seemed to know me. And he told me of a place where I might find Clara. When Daryl was stressed out or became bothered by something, he would do a funny little thing with his chin, pushing it out and sliding his bottom lip up onto his top one. It looked rather brutish, but most of his genius seemed to germinate somewhere in that face, and he was making it then. Hmm. He leaned in closer to the screen. You spent nearly an hour in the gamma state. Perhaps we've perfected your dosage. It felt different this time. Closer to what I remember from the coma, I said, hoping to persuade him further. He looked up at me. You said this dream character appeared to know you. What do you mean by that? I'm not sure, I whispered, rubbing the sleep from my eyes. The way he spoke to me, it was like speaking with an old friend. Daryl nodded. Interesting. What else can you remember about him? Well, I cleared my throat. He killed me. I saw a smile begin to form on his face, but he quickly willed it away. That explains the spike in your pulse before the return to consciousness. I wrangled the EEG cap and slipped it back onto my head. Please, just one more session. It may be the last I ever need. No, Alan. You've still got the medicine in your system. If I miscalculate your dose, it could kill you. Plus, I've only got enough left for two more sessions. And I don't know how much more can go missing from the pharmacy before somebody notices. How are you supposed to conduct any research if you aren't even willing to research anything? I asked, the frustration in my voice becoming more apparent. I see how you're looking at those graphs. This may be the breakthrough you need and you're worried about a little risk? He was making the face again. Daryl was a professional, but he was not bound by ethics. That I knew. Before we met, he had already been conducting experiments on his comatose patients, searching for a safe way to communicate with the unconscious mind. When his supervisor caught wind, the research came to a grinding halt, but it only took two short conversations with me to convince him to continue his work outside of the system so I knew his reluctance was mostly for show. Okay, he dropped his shoulders in defeat. But just a half dose. I've got to be at work by six. I smiled and extended my arm out toward him. He jabbed the needle into my skin. My body turned to butter, and the mattress became my skillet. On it I melted and oozed. My mind sizzled into vapor, and I drifted from one world to another.